So you just found out you're a bridesmaid for your friend's wedding, which is super exciting, but it can also be a little bit pricey by the time you add up paying for your dress and paying for gifts and the stega and things like that. So you might be thinking, do I really need to spend a couple more hundred dollars on the makeup artist or can I just do it myself? But it's hard because you still want to look really good and beautiful and glam, but you're not quite sure if you trust yourself. Well, you can trust me. I'm going to show you how to do this beautiful bridesmaid look for any color of dress that you're wearing. I'm going to show you how to tweak the eye look a little bit if you do want it to be cohesive with your bridal color and I'm going to give you a few tips to keep in mind when you are thinking about doing your own bridesmaid makeup because it is a little bit different than just another everyday makeup look so if you want to save a little bit of money look like yourself but just a beautiful glowing bridal kind of version then this is definitely the tutorial for you my name is Karina by the way so welcome to my channel my channel is focused on natural and classy and wearable makeup looks so if you are into that style of makeup then I think you'll really like my content I just picked up my dress. I'm the maid of honor for my best friend's wedding. She's getting married in June. She's got three other bridesmaids and we're all wearing completely different colors. So I'm wearing navy blue and it's just like this solid um, spaghetti strap dress. It's really plain and simple, but really fitted. The other girls are wearing terracotta, hunter green and copper. And this bridesmaid look is gonna look perfect on any color like I said it'll look beautiful on every single one of them so we want to look really radiant and glowy you still don't want to look like you're wearing too much makeup but we have to keep in mind that we'll be in a lot of photos and we want the makeup to last for a long time we're also going to be doing a little bit of body makeup too because it is a big event and like I said we'll be photographed so it's just going to all tie in really nicely I've already moisturized and put my sunscreen on I'm just going to do a little bit of a lip balm before I go in with my base I'm going to put on a little bit of a glowing product this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter I'm basically putting it all over my whole face. So when you're a bridesmaid, some other things you want to think about if you're doing your own makeup is just asking the bride like if she has a vision or if there's anything in particular that she wants. Obviously, it really depends on the theme of the wedding. Like some brides want all of their bridesmaids to wear a nude lip or a bold lip if that's what they're going for. Usually, it's pretty natural and just kind of a subtle look, but she might want everyone to kind of be somewhat cohesive. She might say, I don't care, do whatever you think looks good on you. So definitely check in with her. The other thing you don't wanna do is look the same as her. So if the bride plans to do like a gold eyeshadow look, then I would probably steer clear of that and I would do something a little bit different. If the bride's gonna be wearing a red lip, then I would think that the bridal party shouldn't wear a red lip because you really want her to stand out. You still want to look really good because a lot of eyes will be on you, but you also have to remember the day is not about you. <laughs> so really making sure that she's getting what, what she wants is really important. For this look, I'm going to be using my MAC Face and Body. This is also a really lightweight natural product, which is exactly what I'm going for. So I'm going to put a little bit on the back of my hand. I'm going to use that same brush and I'm going to start into the in the center of my face and work my way out to the edges, but I might not even put foundation all around the edges of my face. I really just kind of want to even out my skin, but I still really want it to look like skin and just kind of have like a barely there product. Keep in mind when you're doing your foundation, every surface does not need to be fully saturated or covered. You're still gonna be doing some contour around the forehead, contour around the cheeks, concealer. By the time you keep adding makeup, it's gonna look like you have basically like a full face of makeup. So don't feel like you need to go in with so many layers. So I really only use like one squeeze. I'm gonna do another small squeeze on the back of my hand. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and work that down my neck. And then I'll just come back up and make sure everything on my face is really even and that the edges going out to the outer part of my face are like perfectly non-detectable. So I'm gonna finish the rest of my body later, but I barely put any foundation on and my skin just looks already really nice. For my concealer, I'm gonna use the Born This Way concealer just because it is a really nice like hydrating natural formula. And I wanna bring a little bit of life and light into the center of my face. So I'm mixing snow and nude. I am gonna do a little bit more concealing than I normally do because I want everything to look perfect in photographs. So for me, that means bringing that product down a little bit further than I normally do. So I am kind of doing that like old school triangle look, if you remember that. Um, but it, once I blend it all in, it's just gonna bring light into my face and make sure everything is perfected and even in the center. And my version of a lot of concealer still isn't that much concealer compared to some girls. Make sure you blend it out with a sponge. Use a sponge as much as you can in this look. 
So you want everything to look as flawless as you can. And then I just do my nose a little bit right on top, right around the edges, and then blend that out as well. It's still looking really natural because most of the product is in the center, but the outer part of your face is still like quite light coverage. If you have any blemishes you want to cover, which I do, I'm going to do that right now as well. I'm actually going to wear a powder blush today, but I'm going to do a cream contour using the same foundation brush that I already used. We'll blend that out a little bit. And don't forget your forehead as well, just bringing color up there. I'm going to do a little on my jawline, but you don't have to do this part. And I'm sure you can tell, but I did do a layer of tanner last night. I like to just put some tanner on before big events because it just makes me feel prettier and more glowy. Now I'm ready to set everything. I like to use translucent powder. Because we put all of that glow underneath our foundation, translucent powder won't cover that up. It'll just set all the products that we have so that they stay in place. But after we spray our face, the glow from within will still shine through. So I'm gonna use my sponge, my damp sponge, and I'm gonna set with that. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the powder to be placed exactly where I put it on my skin. I don't want a brush to be moving anything around. Now I am gonna set my whole face because I really want all of this makeup to stay in place. I'm gonna add a little bit of bronzer on top of the cream bronzer. Um, I'm not gonna put too much on, but I just want that color to come through a little bit more. And I'm gonna just sweep this down my neck. We want everything to be really, really like blended and all look like one. Whenever you're wearing a strapless dress or you're showing a lot of skin, it's really, really important. Now your blush color choice doesn't matter too much. You can just do whatever blush looks good on you. I'm gonna choose this one by Cover FX. It's called Warm Honey. And it has like the shiny side and the matte side. And I like to mix them because I want my whole cheek to have an overall glow. I'm not gonna do like the typical highlight on the cheekbone. I just want my whole skin to have this really beautiful glow, like the lit from within. So I'm mixing both of those. And then I'm just gonna put that onto my cheek. Little on my nose. When you're doing your blush, keep in mind, and this is really important, do a little bit more than you're comfortable with because blush is the one product that just completely fades and we want to look good in photos. So your cheek color, I see this all the time. Girls don't put enough blush on because they feel like they look like a clown or something. Just put more than you think because you want it to show up in those photographs. I'm going to show you a few products to bring at the end of the video to the wedding and blush will be one of them. Okay, this is one of my favorite products in the world. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting in luminous light. This product is just the most beautiful lit from within glow. So I'm taking a dual fiber brush. I'm gonna swirl it around in that and I'm gonna put that all over my cheek area where I put my blush on. This is just gonna bring luminosity, luminosity to your skin and give you that perfect bridally look. I'll, I'll go over my nose as well, a little bit on my chin. It's almost like using a powder, like you don't have to be afraid of it because it's very, very hard to overdo. So just put it everywhere, like put it wherever you want. <laughs> so you just kind of get this beautiful kind of airbrushed, bridally look. I always just like to fill in my beauty mark so that it doesn't look like covered with foundation. So my skin's pretty much done. I'm just gonna spray it with MAC Fix Plus. I'm gonna move through eyebrows really quick. Just keep it as natural as you can. Don't put brow product in if you don't need it. Just brush them up and set them. I'm gonna put a little bit of brow powder in and set mine and we'll be done. Brows can look overdone in photos really quick and you do not want that. The more natural your brows look, the better. Okay, moving on to eyes. I feel like I need to speed this up a little bit. I get so caught up on skin because it's my favorite part of makeup. So I like explain all these things on skin and then I get to my eyes and I'm like, okay, just do this and this, let's go. <laughs> the goal for our eye makeup is to make our eye color pop, still look natural, not look overdone. Without a question, the star of the show for your eyes is gonna be doing a little bit more work on your lashes because that's what looks good on everybody. That's what makes you look so beautiful in photos. So we will do a little bit of shadow, but we're gonna keep it pretty neutral. So for choosing your eye color that you're gonna be contouring your eyes with, just choose any shade of brown that looks good on you. And this is where you can think about the color of your dress a little bit. I'm personally gonna be choosing shades of brown that are a little bit more on the cooler side. I don't have like a perfect cool tone shade of brown. So I am actually gonna mix a couple colors to get that. But if your dress is not blue and it's say like a rust color or something, then maybe use like a bit of a warmer shade of brown. And then I'm gonna show you one more tip to think about your dress color in just a little bit. So first I'm gonna take my 
blending brush. This is a Wedge by MAC. It's a cool toned light brown shade. And I'm just gonna pop this into my crease and outer corner. I'm not doing anything crazy. Like this is the most simple look in the world, but it just looks, it's gonna look gorgeous on you. It's gonna look gorgeous in photos and it's very brightly. And I'm bringing that around on the lower lid on the outer corner as well and just blending it up to connect it to the top. And because I want my look to just be a little bit on the cooler side, I'm also using this Tarte Lip Palette and I'm gonna use this color Power Player and it's just like a, almost like a gray kind of slatey color. I'm not gonna do much at all, but I just wanna mix that in a little bit. So see how it just kind of makes it a little bit cooler toned? So here's the part where you can get a little bit creative. If you're wearing a, a dress color that is more on the warm tone, like I said, like a rust color or something like that, then you can grab like more of a warm kind of rusty, maybe a, oops, maybe like a peachy color or an orangey color or something yellow. Like I've got the soft glam palette here. So you could take orange soda, for example, or a little bit of burnt orange and just put a little bit on your brush and kind of mix that into your crease and it'll just kind of warm your look up a little bit. If you're wearing like a rose colored dress, which is a really popular bridesmaid choice, then maybe just take your blush or like a little bit of like a rosy tone and mix that and, and put that into your crease. So you can kind of tie in like the undertones of your dress into your eye look, but we're not doing anything crazy. So you really can't screw it up. Even if you just stick to brown, it's gonna be perfect for everyone. For my lid, I'm gonna go in with a color by MAC. It's called Naked Lunch. It's just a very neutral like skin colored highlight. It's really beautiful for like medium, light to medium skin tones. If you have a little bit of a darker skin tone, and then just go in with a, a highlight shade that kind of matches your skin. Um, so I'm just gonna put that right on my finger and pop it all over my lid. Just take a clean brush and make sure that that transition part is nice and blended. So the reason I chose that color is because it's neutral enough that it's not gonna like clash with anything the bride does. Plus it'll just look good with any dress color because it is neutral. I'm also going to use Naked Lunch for my inner corner highlight. It's really important that we define our eyes because we want the photographs to look really good. So I'm going to just use a very neutral brown liner. This one is Dimmer by Morphe. I am going to line a very thin line on my top lashes and a little bit on the bottom corner on the outer part. And I'll also tight line my eye. That's really important for when we go to do our lashes. This is the difference lining your eye makes versus not. So I'm gonna curl my lashes, put mascara on. I'm just gonna do one nice, thin, even coat, and then I'm gonna go in with some individual lashes. I did a full video on how to apply individual lashes and how they look compared to a strip lash. I'm gonna link it up here. So if you wanna do, if you wanna put your own on, watch that video. Otherwise, just get a friend to do it for you. Don't skip the individual lashes because they are really the star of the show. Okay, and now we're on to lips. Now you yourself would know what lip shade is gonna suit you. Most brides want the bridal party to wear like a nice nude pink or a nude color. Um, just anything that's not too bold because again you don't want to take attention away from the bride. The best tip I have for you for lips is to choose something that is super fuss free because you know you're going to be out all night. You want to be able to reapply it before the photographer takes photos. You're going to be eating and drinking. So just do something that's really low maintenance, like a tinted balm or just like a sheer lip tint kind of thing. But I do recommend having a liner. Two beautiful natural liners that I like are the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in Naked 2. Or a little bit more of like a brownie nude is Spice by MAC. I just turned my light down a little bit. A really, really pretty color choice would be this Lux Gel Color Lip and Cheek Balm by nude sticks. It's just like a really cute kind of classic bridally pink color and it's really comfortable and easy to apply. I think for today's look I'm gonna go with Velvet Teddy by MAC, like a nudie pink. I'm gonna line with Spice by MAC. And then after you put your lip on just have a look and see if you need to add anything. I am gonna add a little bit of blush because it's already faded a bit and I want it to pop in photos. And then I'm gonna show you how to do your body makeup as well. MAC Face and Body is a beautiful product for the body, but you can just use another sheer product that matches your skin. The key with body makeup is to just make sure it's really sheer. So put it on the back of your hand, then just take your sponge and really kind of bounce it around your hand first. Once you get your product on your sponge, then you're just going to 
kind of bounce it around onto your chest and your decolletage. Some girls kind of get like rashy when they get nervous or hot. I don't, so I don't really feel like I need very much body makeup but it's a great product for if you do kind of get like a little bit red or rashy. It's just gonna make everything look really even and really like cohesive with your makeup on your face. And whether you wanna put makeup on your body or not, definitely put a highlighter on there. So I'm gonna use that same Hollywood Flawless Filter. Take my Beauty Blender again, bounce that in the product, and then I'm gonna start right on my collarbones. I'm gonna put a little bit on my chest and then definitely on my shoulders. As far as what I would bring with me throughout the day, I would just grab a little pack. I'd take some bobby pins and throw those in there. Blotting papers are a must. These are super cheap from Amazon. They just pick up that oil and that shine without moving around any of the makeup. So blotting papers are a must. And then bring the lip liner that you used and the lip product that you chose. And then because blush does fade, I would also bring a little bit of blush because it's gonna make you still keep looking alive throughout the day and then just a brush for applying that. So this is what I consider to be a very neutral, very universal bridesmaid makeup look. Goes with everything. I still feel really glowy and pretty. If you're intimidated by the individual lashes part, ask the makeup artist that's there to apply them for you and just pay her for that part. Hopefully that's something that they'd offer, but I just think that that's really what makes the look. That and all the skin stuff that we did. So if you're a bridesmaid and you have an upcoming wedding, I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Ever since I know your name, you struck me on this cloud for a joy ride. Hope every kiss would be the same and every hug would last.